The Mandalorian Armor, Book 1 in the Bounty Hunter Wars series by K.W. Jeter, published in 1998. This is a non-spoiler review, so I will keep details as vague as possible. The book bounces between Boba Fett's efforts to destroy the Bounty Hunters Guild from within prior to the events of The Emperor Strikes Back and his miraculous escape from the Sarlacc Pit in Return of the Jedi. Is that vague enough? Let's start with the pros. Having just reread this book, I actually liked it better this time around. Why? Because it no longer feels beholden to the films. All the books released prior to Disney's acquisition of Lucasfilms, like this one, are now classified as Legends. That's what this book feels like. It follows the legends of Boba Fett. He's cool and collected. Nothing surprises him, as he always seems to know what's about to happen. He's got this incredible arsenal of weapons and surveillance equipment. Even the huts get the legendary treatment. Apparently they have thick skin that's impervious to blaster fire, and vital organs buried so deeply beneath fat they can't be reached by viral blades. Sounds plausible. I also liked how unique some of the character designs are, two of them in particular. Are they a bit ridiculous and hard to imagine? Perhaps, especially since I haven't described them here, but they're fun, trust me. And I like when books don't paint side characters as complete idiots. We get to see things from several perspectives. They're all schemers, and based on what we know, their actions make sense. They're all trying to outsmart one another. I also like the two droids. They're nice parallel to the films, but also unique. The 1EXE droid, his simple speaking pattern, it entertained me. When events go south for our characters, he responds by saying confusion, noise, non-goodness. That's great. Heck, even the constant use of nerf waste and barb, they worked for me. This is a Star Wars book, so we're not going to get f-bombs, but it's good to emphasize what kind of people the bounty hunters are. They're rough around the edges. Unfortunately, the story does jump around quite a bit. It's not only bouncing between the past and present, it skips large chunks of time. It sometimes felt like I dozed off during chapters and missed things, but quick glances back would prove otherwise. On top of that, it's not always that interesting. I'm not saying the book is boring, but it does spend a lot of time focusing on what characters are planning to do rather than what they actually end up doing. The conflicts are few and far between. Boba Fett's plans also come off as being overly expensive, time-consuming, and complicated. Some of the things that he sets up are in anticipation of things he shouldn't be able to anticipate. He seems almost omniscient. But my biggest problem with the book is that it doesn't feel like a complete novel. The past and present storylines, they don't ever really connect. A few dangling questions, those are fine, but this book answers almost none of the questions that it poses. In conclusion, The Mandalorian Armor is worth reading if you're as obsessed with Star Wars as I am. Who cares if it's not canon? Heck, I doubt I would want to read a canon version of Boba Fett. He's not nearly as cool. I'll give the novel 4 out of 5 stars. It's an entertaining, over-the-top, what-if scenario where Fett's abilities match his great character design. Really wanted more answers though. It felt like the book was promising a lot more than it gave me. Anyway, that's all I've got. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Peace.